Okay, welcome to chapter three. We are going to do together problem 3-5b from your textbook, Adjusting Entries and Adjusted Trial Balances. And this can be found on page 144 in your textbook. You're also going to need the chapter three step-by-step -step that is on the website. And this is going to say problem 3-5. And we're doing problem B right now. This is a journal page. And then the second page says adjusted trial balance at the top of it. Now we're going to start with the journal page. In our textbook, our problem says Reese Financial Services Corp Company, which specializes in appliance repair services, is owned and operated by jo Joni Reese. Reese Financial Services Company's accounting clerk prepared the unadjusted trial balance at July 31st, 2014, as shown below. And here we have the unadjusted trial balance. We go up to the top of the next page. It tells us the data needed to determine year-end adjustments are as follows, and it lists A through G. Our instructions say, journalize the adjusting entries using the following additional accounts, and it lists some accounts for us. Step two says determine the balance of the accounts affected by the adjusting entries and prepare the adjusted trial balance. Let's start by journalizing our adjusting entries. We're going to come up here to the top of this page, top of page 145, and we're going to start with the first one. And the first one is A says depreciation of the building for the year $6,400. Depreciation of building for the year $6,400. So we're going to come over to our journal page. And the first thing we're going to do is centered at the top of our journal page, we are going to write the words adjusting entries. This way we know what these entries are, that they're not just regular everyday journal entries, they are adjusting entries. Our book is using the date of July 31st, so that is the date that we will use. Um, the year is 2014. Now we're talking about depreciation, depreciation of the building. So the first thing we're going to do is debit our expense. So we're going to put in here depreciation expense. Building. And if you're like me and you write too big, you can abbreviate things. Depreciation is, a, is abbreviated D-E-P-R. Expense is E-X-P. And building is B-L-D-G. So we're going to debit our, our depreciation expense building for $6,400. And we're going to credit accumulated depreciation. Again, I'm going to abbreviate because I write big. Building. And that's going to be our credit for $6,400. The next one in our textbook, letter B, tells us that the depreciation of the equipment for the year was 2,800. Depreciation of equipment for the year was 2,800. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. The date is the 31st. Depreciation expense. Equipment. And our book tells us it was 2,800. Accumulated depreciation. Equipment. Is your credit. And again, the book tells us it was 2,800. Letter C, accrued salaries and wages at July 31st, $900. Accrued salaries and wages at July 31st, $900. So the first thing we're going to do is, is put in our date. And we're going to debit the expense. So we're going to go salaries and wages expense.
And that is a debit for $900. And in this case, because we're recording salaries and wages that we have not paid yet, we're going to credit the payable. Salaries and wages payable. We have not paid this $900 yet, so we're going to credit salaries and wages payable. Letter D tells us that our unexpired insurance is $1,500. Unexpired insurance is $1,500. Now this is one of those that we have to calculate. <clears throat> okay, this is one that we have to calculate. So we're going to come over to page 144 and find our prepaid insurance account. And our prepaid insurance account tells us that it has a balance of $6,000 has a balance of six thousand dollars. Our adjustment information tells us that as of July 31st there's one thousand five hundred dollars left so we need to figure out how much we've actually used. So I'm just going to use the margin of my paper up here and do six thousand minus one thousand five hundred And we have used $4,500 worth of insurance. Okay. So now my adjusting entry is going to be the 31st. We're going to debit the expense. So we have insurance expense. $4,500. And again, I got that number from taking the number from the trial balance minus the number my book told me was left in the account. I am then going to credit prepaid insurance because we need to remove that amount from our insurance account. Prepaid insurance is an asset. We decrease the asset using a credit. So we're going to credit prepaid insurance to show that we've used up that amount and it is no longer there. Letter E says, fees earned but unbilled on July 31st, $10,200. Fees earned but unbilled July 31st, $10,200. So we'll start with our date. We have done services on account, but we have not billed them yet. So that's something we need to do. We're going to send them bills, which means they have not paid their account, so we're going to use our accounts receivable account. We're going to debit accounts receivable. For the $10,200. And we're going to credit fees earned. For $10,200. We're debiting accounts receivable because we have completed this work for people, but they have not paid us yet. So we're going to debit accounts receivable, credit fees earned to show that we've earned it. Letter F, supplies on hand July 31st, $615. Supplies on hand July 31st, $615. This is another one where we need to calculate something. So we're going to come over here to our trial balance on the page 144 and find our supplies account and follow that straight over and we find out that we started with a balance of 1725. We started with a balance of 1725. Our adjusting information is telling us that we only have 615 left. So we have to subtract those two numbers, and again, I'm just going to use the margin at the top of my page. We started with 1,725. We have 615 left, so we're going to subtract them, and we get 1,110. And again, this is our supplies number. 
So we're going to come down here to our journal and fill in our date. We're going to debit the expense. for 1,110. And we're going to credit supplies to show that we no longer have this amount. We need to remove it from the supplies account. Supplies is an asset, so we need to remove that $1,110 from our asset, so we're going to credit it. Okay, the last one. Letter G, rent unearned on July 31st is $300. Rent unearned as of July 31st is $300. This is another one that we have to calculate. So we are going to come over to our trial balance, which is on page 144. And we're going to find our unearned rent account, which is right there. And follow it straight across, and it has a balance of $3,600. Unearned rent has a balance of $3,600. Again, our, our adjustment information says that our unearned rent is $300. So we're going to subtract those two numbers. And I know you could probably do that one in your head, but I'm going to write it out anyway so that you can see what we're doing. Subtract them we get $3,300 in rent. Okay, we're going to journalize this. We're going to start with 31. Unearned rent had a credit balance of $3,600, and we need to remove the $3,300 from it, so we're going to debit it. Again, it had a credit balance. We are going to debit it to remove this amount from the account. 3,300. We're going to move that 3,300 over to rent revenue because that is where we need it to be in order to show that we've made that money. So we're going to credit rent revenue. We just moved it from unearned rent to rent revenue. We've now earned that amount, so it needs to move over to the revenue account. Okay. We have completed our adjusting entries. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to complete our adjusted trial balance. What we need to do this is your textbook, page 144, in the journal page that we just used. We're going to take the information that's in your textbook under the unadjusted trial balance and we're going to put it onto our adjusted trial balance with a few exceptions. Some of the numbers are going to be changed. If we made a journal entry to that account, then we're going to need to change that balance. Let's start on our adjusted trial balance. We're going to start with the name of the company, which is Reese Financial Services Company. The date is July 31st, 2014. Looking at our trial balance in our textbook starts with cash with a balance of 10,200 and we didn't do anything to cash in our journal so we're just going to write cash with a balance of 10,200. Now the next one is accounts receivable has a balance of 34,750. 34750. If we look in our journal that we just did, we did have a debit to accounts receivable of 10,200. Since we had a debit balance in our trial balance and we have a debit in our journal, we're going to add those two numbers together. And I'm going to use the margin of my paper for my math. 34750 plus 10,200 gives us a new balance of 44,950. This is accounts receivable. So we're going to come down here under cash and write accounts receivable. And it has a debit balance of 44,950. Again, I took the 34750, 
came from the textbook, 34,750. The 10,200 came from my journal, 10,200. I added them together because they are both debits, and I got a balance of 44,950. So that is what I gave my accounts receivable account. Now, I'm going to come over here to my journal, and I'm going to put a little check mark over here so that I know that I took care of that one. Not something you have to do, something you can do, something I'm doing just because it makes more sense to me. Okay, back to our textbook. The next one is prepaid insurance. So I come down here, prepaid insurance. I did make a change to prepaid insurance in my journal, so I'm going to take the amount from my textbook, which was $6,000, $6,000 debit in my textbook. On my journal, prepaid insurance had a credit of $4,500, so I'm going to subtract $4,500. and I get 1500 This is my insurance. So prepaid insurance now has a balance of 1500 The next one in my textbook is supplies. And I did make a change to supplies. My textbook tells me that supplies has a balance of 1725 If I look over on my journal, oh, you know what? I'm going to put a check mark there next to prepaid to show I did that. If I look over on my journal, supplies has a credit of 1110 So again, we're going to subtract these. and I get $615. So that is my new balance for my supplies account. The next one is land. Land has a balance of $50,000. We did not do anything to land. So we're going to list land and $50,000 debit. The next one in our book is building, which has a balance of 155750. We didn't do anything to building. So we're going to list building and its balance of 155750. The next one in our book is accumulated depreciation building, which we did change that. So first thing we're going to do is list accumulated depreciation building okay so accumulated depreciation building our textbook tells us that it has a balance of a credit balance of 62,850 so we're going to list that on our paper 62,850 and in our journal, it tells us accumulated depreciation building had a credit of 6400 Since they're both credits, we're going to add them together. And we get a new balance of 69250 So we come over here to our paper, accumulated depreciation building, has a credit balance of 69250 I'm going to come back to my journal. I'm going to put a check mark next to accumulated depreciation building so I know I did that one. The next one listed in my textbook is equipment. And we didn't do anything to equipment. 
Equipment has a debit balance of $45,000, so we're just going to list that one on our trial balance. The next one in our textbook is accumulated depreciation equipment, and that one has a credit balance of seventeen six fifty. Credit balance of seventeen six fifty. That one we do need to calculate. So we look at our journal and we find accumulated depreciation equipment had a credit of two thousand eight hundred. Since they're both credits, we're going to add them together. and I get a new balance of 20450 They were both credits, so they're going to remain credits on our adjusted trial balance. We have accumulated depreciation equipment with a credit balance of 20450 and I'm going to come back to my journal and mark off that I used that one. The next one we're looking at in our textbook is accounts payable. And we didn't do anything to accounts payable in our journal. That is a credit balance of $3,750. So we're just going to copy that into our new trial balance. Accounts payable. A credit balance of $3,750. So we just finished accounts payable for $3,750. Looking in our textbook, the next one listed is unearned rent, and that has a credit balance of $3,600. So we'll come down to our adjusted trial balance and list unearned rent. Come over to our math area and it has a balance of $3,600. If we look in our journal, we had a debit to unearned rent of $3,300. So we're going to subtract these two and we get a difference of $300. This one was the credit and this one is the debit. Since the credit was larger, this $300 is also a credit. So unearned rent is going to have a credit of $300. We'll come over to our journal and we'll check mark to show that we've done that one. Now when you do your adjusting entries, sometimes you're going to be using accounts that aren't listed in your original unadjusted trial balance. Our example of this is salaries and wages expense. I'm sorry, salaries and wages payable. This one, salaries and wages payable, is not listed in our original unadjusted trial balance. So we have to add that one in. Because it's a payable, it is a liability. So we're going to list that one next with the rest of our liabilities. Salaries and wages payable has a credit of $900. So we're just going to bring that over here to our trial balance. salaries and wages payable and that was a credit of nine hundred dollars and then come back to your journal and mark off that we did that one now looking back in our textbook we just did unearned rent we stuck in salaries and wages payable the next one is capital and we didn't make any changes to capital Capital has a credit balance of 153,550. So we'll come down to our unadjusted trial balance. And it's Joni Reese is our owner's name. Capital. And again, it was a credit balance of 153,550.
The next one in our textbook after capital is drawing, and we didn't make any changes to drawing in our journal. And that one has a debit balance of $8,000. So we come down to our, our adjusted trial balance. Joni Reese, drawing, with a debit balance of $8,000. The next one in our textbook is fees earned, and we did make changes to fees earned. Fees earned currently has a credit balance of $158,600. So we're going to put that in our little math section over here. Now looking at our journal page, we find fees earned has a credit of $10,200. So since they're both credits, we're going to add them together. And we get 168800 So we're going to list fees earned. And that's a credit of 168800 Come back to your journal. Where did it go? There we go. And mark it off that it's done. Okay, so we finished fees earned, 168,000. So we need to look at our journal and see if there's any more revenue accounts that we may have missed. And there is, there's one called rent revenue. Rent revenue doesn't appear in our unadjusted trial balance, but it does appear in our journal, so we need to add that to our new trial balance. Rent revenue has a credit of $3,300. So we come over to our adjusted trial balance, and we list rent revenue. And again, that had a credit balance of $3,300. So we're going to come over to our journal and we're going to put a check mark there to show that we've done that one. The next section on our unadjusted trial balance that we're going to get into if we look at our textbook are the expenses. Now we have to look, remember our expenses are listed in order of the amount. The largest expense first, for example in the current one we have salaries and wages expense is at $56,000 and the, the smallest expense is last with miscellaneous. Now if we look at our journal, we have quite a few expenses that are not checked off yet. We have depreciation expense building, depreciation expense equipment, salaries and wages expense, which will be added to the one that's in the book, insurance expense, and supplies expense. So all of these expenses have to be added into this list based on their amounts. Okay. Now if you get them out of order, that's fine, but we want to do the best we can to get them in the right order. We're going to start with salaries and wages expense in your textbook is the first one they list and we're going to start with that one that is going to continue to be the, the largest expense that we have. So we're going to come down here and list salaries and wages expense. In your textbook it has a debit balance of 56,850. We're going to write that over here in our math section. Come over to your journal. Salaries and wages expense has a debit of $900. So we're going to write that here. Since they're both debits, we're going to add them together. And we get a new balance of 57,750. So we come over here, salaries and wages expense. 57750 Come back to your journal and put a check mark there to show that we've done that one. The next one in your textbook lists utilities expense for 14100 We have not made any changes, nor do we have any expenses listed in our journal that are larger than that one. So we're going to list that one next.
utilities expense and that had a debit balance of fourteen thousand one hundred the next one in your textbook is advertising expense which has a debit balance of seven thousand five hundred and again there's nothing in our journal that is larger than that so we're going to list that one next Advertising expense had a debit balance of 7500 The next one in our textbook is repairs expense, which has a debit balance of 6100 And we do have something larger than repairs expense. If we look over in our journal, the depreciation expense of our building is six thousand four hundred. So we're going to list this one first. Depreciation expense building is going to be the next one. And that has a debit of six thousand four hundred. We're going to come over to our journal and put a check mark to show that we did that one. Now we can go back to our textbook and grab that repairs expense, 6100 The next one in our textbook is miscellaneous expense for 4025 but we have things in our journal that are larger than that. We have expenses in our journal that are larger than that. If we look in our journal, again we're looking for things that are larger than $4,025. As a matter of fact, our miscellaneous expense is unique. That one is never going to be in numeric order. That one's always going to be last. Okay, miscellaneous expense will always be listed last. So we're going to look at our, our expenses that we have left. We have depreciation expense equipment for $2,800. We have insurance expense for $4,500. And we have supplies expense for $1,110. We're going to start with our insurance expense since that is the one that is the highest amount. So we're going to go with insurance expense first. Insurance expense had a debit of $4,500. Going back to your journal, check that one off. And now the last two we have left, we have one for $2,800 and one for $1,110. So we're going to go with the one that's $2,800 first. Depreciation expense equipment for $2,800. And again, that was a debit for 2800 Then go back to your journal and put a check mark that says we did that one. And the only one we have left is supplies expense had a debit of 1110 Going back to your journal and check that that one is finished. And if you look at your journal, they should all have check marks that show that you've taken care of all of them. You've taken all of those amounts in, into consideration when you did your adjusted trial balance. Not quite done yet. Looking back at our textbook, we still have that one last entry of miscellaneous expense for 4025 So we're going to pull that one down.
And again, miscellaneous expense will always be listed last, $4,025. Now that we have all of our account names and numbers on there, the next thing we're going to do is add up our debit and credit columns. And again, you have to add both columns and make sure that they're equal, just in case you have a mistake somewhere. So at the bottom of our paper, we're going to write the word totals. We're going to draw a single line under both columns. And we're going to add up the debit column. And then we're going to add up the credit column. And when you know that they're equal, you're going to double underline them to show yes, I checked them, and yes, they're equal. And then you've completed your adjusted trial balance. At this point, go ahead and jump back to the PowerPoint for the next set of directions.